Sure thing. And here I come. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> come on. <laughs> you would think after two years, everything would be working perfectly by now, you know? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you very much. I love some of the stats here and I love some of the things you said as well, uh, because I'm going to touch on some of that here. But uh, what we're looking at is I've got 10 minutes and a lot of slides. Can you see my screen, by the way? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, you guys already know who OmniSend is. I'll let you know that before. Really, I want to get through four key points today. And this is, uh, you know, we're talking about key shopping periods, which you just touched on, about what we should be looking for when we start marketing move through. We'll look at some of the very high level email trends, email optimization, which I think will be the most important thing for all your messages this year. And then briefly look at just some SMS trends. So you can kind of see where we're heading as we get into the holiday season. I know Greg is going to pick up on some specific strategies on that one uh, later in the presentation as well. So let's jump in and start looking at those, those days. So we already mentioned that we kind of have this weird economy, which we've had the last couple of years, but we've got high inflation. There's a lot of uncertainty. I think we're hearing a little bit less about um, you know, delivery and things like that, but still going to be irrelevant. Uh, supply chain issue this year as well. So ultimately we're left with, we don't really know what's going on, which is kind of the thing every year. But how I like to frame that is I worry less about that. And I worry, worry more about let's capture the sales while we can, because we just don't know. And we know that people will be shopping earlier than usual, but they will probably be spending a little bit less. We know Prime Day is going to be October 11th and 12th this year. So they've added in, I would count that as your unofficial official start to uh, the holiday shopping season as well. But we've seen this morphing from individual days to weekends, to weeks, to what we used to call as gray November. And now we've just kind of got to this thing. I, I saw Christmas trees put up in stores the other day. All right. And I'm like, all right, we're already there. We're not even close to Thanksgiving yet uh, or close to Halloween. And we are rocking and rolling with that stuff. So kind of think about this extra long shopping season, you know, it doesn't mean you need to have your biggest sales throughout the entire thing, but let's focus on uh, the season, just try to capture those sales while we can. Now within this, I kind of go with this, uh, this period of, of cyber Ted, and this is the Sunday before Black Friday through Giving Tuesday. So the Tuesday, the day following Cyber Monday here. And for the last couple of years, we've seen this become a hotter and hotter 10 day period for shopping here. And I expect these numbers to come up a little bit, but really, if you're looking at that chart, the first five days kind of leading up to Thanksgiving, uh, you can see just a general increase in orders coming through. And what that tells you is yes, people are shopping earlier in that week. So if you kind of neglect those days leading up to Thanksgiving, you're potentially missing 30% of all sales for that 10 day span as well. And we kind of see the same thing happen from a email send standpoint. So the left hand side, these are your scheduled sends that you're sending out. You can see those kind of increase and they, they kind of peak at Black Friday and then drop down a little bit for Cyber Monday. But from an automated send standpoint, which are going to be your behavior based messages, the ones that only send when the user takes an action, like visiting the website or signing up for an email program, probably to get that discount or abandoning a cart. It's pretty consistent throughout the course. And, you know, we look at the second busiest day there, that's going to be the, the Monday of that particular week. And what that really tells us is behavior-based automations continue to send because people are continuing to shop and they are shopping early. So, uh, you know, start, if, in my opinion, kind of look at it as Black Friday week, look at the Cyber 10 period for your biggest deals and then kind of work everything else around that 10-day period. And that's where I would go with it. And then when we're talking about those days as well, how do we actually market on those particular ones? So, you know, I think the tenfold days are still tenfold. People know what Thanksgiving Day is, which was one of your bigger days of the year now, but they know what Black Friday is. They know what Cyber Monday is. So we can utilize that. And we're, I would still recommend sending two, three messages on those tenfold days, but you don't need to send two or three around there. What we do see is that weekends throughout the course of November and even into December tend to have lower email send volume. Same thing with SMS as well. I look at that as an opportunity. So if we know there's fewer emails going out that day, but we also know people are shopping on each of those days, utilize those days and send some emails out there, send some SMS out there and try to engage people when they might be seeking that lull. So look at the weekends as kind of your advantage here. And then Obviously, utilize SMS as best possible. So hopefully you have a program now. If you don't have one already, it's not too late for the holiday season. Go ahead and add a mobile number to your email sign-up forms. 
and start utilizing it for what you can, because it can help kind of reduce that email fatigue, but also for those people that either unsubscribed from your emails or just realize email is no longer their jam, that you can still reach them via an opt-in channel. So uh, if you know, I was talking earlier about you know, a paid spend on social versus Google shopping and things like this. So if we can get an opt-in channel, uh, we'll be there as well. And then obviously automations, they're going to perform better. So rely on them and, and maximize them wherever you can. And for the automations, ultimately what we want to do is we want to sync our time and optimization into the ones that are going to matter the most here. So you can see that chart to the left. We just put out a stats report for the first half of 2022, just a couple of weeks ago. It's not gated. So you can just jump over a website if you want to kind of get some more narrative and more benchmarks there. Ultimately, what you're looking at is that very top line, the orange one, those are your scheduled sends. Everything below that are automated messages. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist to look at that and go, well, automated performs a lot better. So year over year, we typically see about 30% of all email orders coming on automated sends from email programs. Usually it's around 2% or so of the uh, number of sends. So automations can help drive you uh, sales and engagement through a time, but not all automations created equal. So when we get to the holiday season, here is where I would drop my money and focus on optimizing or implementing or expanding upon these three messages. So first half of this year, 88% of all orders from automated messages came from these three automated messages. You're welcome, your cart and your browse abandonment. Last year as a whole, it was 83%. So we're, we're right in that 80% range here. So look at these as your high intent messages that you want to cater to, right? These are people very close to cash or they're doing something that is going to be indicative of making a purchase very soon. So checking out your website, signing up for a program and things like this. So this is how I would optimize it. One, get the messages going, get them in there, make sure they are sending, make sure you have a couple of them going. But with all your messages, including your automated and your scheduled messages, what I would do from an optimization standpoint is look at those value ads we talked about. So uh, you know, Fiona mentioned a few minutes ago about free shipping and what that matters and the deals and things like that that people are looking for. So go through all your messages and figure out which value ads you can add to those messages as secondary or tertiary callouts, or put it in the banner around uh, free shipping, around the discount, use a sense of urgency if you need to, and try to ask yourself, why, should, why would that person buy from me and not from them? And if you can answer that question and reinforce that, you're going to be in good shape. So ways you could do that inside your messaging. Here's just a couple examples. But if you offer gift boxing, any sort of personalization services, uh, customer service calls are great. Things like extended return policies are awesome to call out. Use five-star ratings and customer testimonials in your messages and think about where those might fit, right? Do we need, we want to build consumer confidence here. So if they're abandoning a shopping cart, can we talk about extended return policies or free returns in there or use some customer service testimonials on there? Welcome messages, introduce things like your SMS program and reinforce all those value adds. And ultimately, if you do that, you'll get customers, you'll have that consumer confidence built, but you also improve the customer journey. They know what they're getting there. And then you sprinkle in whatever sales, uh, you know, sale expiration periods, discounts, whatever you wanna do, and you'll have pretty good messaging. Uh, for your email optimization. So do that for your promotional messages, do it for your automated messages. And a lot of times you don't need to recreate the wheel to have success here. So look for those optimization opportunities around intent and, and consumer confidence. And then uh, quickly toward the end here, I want to talk just briefly about SMS marketing and more trends you're seeing here. So we've seen this massive lift over the last couple of years. A couple of years ago, we saw a year over year lift of almost 400. Again, almost 100% lift over that last year through the first half of this year, we're already 36% 30, above what we were seeing last year. And if you look to the right side of the screen there, you can see last year, there was this huge uptick in the use of automated SMS. And I think brands are looking at automated emails and going, well, they perform pretty good here. What can we do from the SMS side? And now we have the ability through platforms like OmniSend, where we can put all these different channels into a singular workflow. So we can have one workflow that says, okay, you're an email only subscriber, you get this series, your email and SMS, we can customize this path for you, your uh, SMS only, we can deliver this for you. And we make these things work together and the SMS becomes a complementary channel. 
as opposed to only a standalone channel for you. So uh, what you could see on that right side of the screen there, you might go eh, 10% down in automation for the first half of the year. And I think what we've seen is it just rose so massively last year and brands are now figuring out how to do this a little bit better. So even though the automated sends are down 10% year over year for the first half, 18% more orders came in from that uh, set of sends year over year and conversion rates have almost doubled. They increased 42% year over year for those automated SMS as well. So we know people are engaging with them. They're still extremely popular and effective, and it is an opt-in channel. So they can always opt out if they want to, but that's going to be really important as well. So uh, it, opportunities for SMS for the holiday season, we can see a slow buildup during that cyber 10 period. I expect this to be a little more, to look similar, but to be a little more uh, even this year, I think we're going to have a really big increase in the week leading up to Thanksgiving Day. Black Friday, obviously, you can see it was the busiest send day of the year last year. So think about utilizing SMS, especially on those days where you might want to give an email break, or maybe you want to do two emails instead of three on those 10 full days, but cut it with SMS a little bit for you. And then just finally, ways we can use SMS on here. Just think about it as a more immediate channel. So email, you're kind of up to the whim of when they're going to check their email. Most studies will tell you SMS is read within about three minutes or so after receipt. It, uh, after receipt. So we have the option there to send, say, last chance reminders or flash sales exclusively for them. If you know you have subscribers on both email and SMS, you can certainly drive them to your email to get more details about the offer. If you SMS only, right, just take them to your website or maybe a landing page if it's something very specific for you. Use it in your automations. Again, we wanna enhance and complement those already powerful workflows, specifically welcome, card abandonment, and browse abandonment, and then replacing email unsubscribes. I alluded to it before, but again, email is not the jam. They're getting too many for the holiday season. They opt out, but we still have this opt-in uh, communication channel. We can use that effectively. And remember, all these things, when we talk about paid uh, retargeting, all these data points between email activity, SMS activity, uh, web push activity, we can then export out to our, our Google ad properties or Facebook ad properties and make it retargeting more effective and hopefully bring the cost of that down while increasing the effectiveness as well. So ultimately, this Black Friday, Cyber Monday season, which is starting in October, it's crazy, Next year, we'll be talking about September, but just start early, plan accordingly. Don't focus on those 10 full days. Uh, think about the customer intent with your messaging and work with optimization opportunities to build consumer confidence. And why would they choose you and not them? Re rely and maximize your automation potential and then utilize SMS in your marketing. And I think if you do some of these very simple things, I always say the small, stupid things, you know, matter. Well, do these small things and they'll add up over time for you. So uh, any, here's contact info for me. You guys can find me uh, if you need to, omnisend.com. Again, we have that stats report there, which is not gated. So you can just bounce over, take a look at some of those metrics as well. But if you need to get a hold of me, feel free to let me know and I'm here for you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I've got lots of questions off the back of that, but we do have a couple from the audience as well. Excellent. So Greg, would you recommend decreasing the time of automations across the board during the 10 day period? We've got uh, Zach would like to know the answer to that. Yeah, I, I, I'm so I'm going to work with an assumption here that maybe you have, say, we'll just say card abandonment. Maybe you have three days in between messages or two days in between messages. And for the general blanket answer would be, yeah, I probably would. Right. So card abandonment, you might want to get two going in the first day. Um, welcome series. I, I say you should have one message sending every day. You shouldn't have a break between those anyways, but hopefully, uh, you know, things like that, you probably don't need two welcome series messages in the same day, but every single day would work for you. Think about ways you can cut those down too. Do I need the third message during the holiday season or can I replace it with something else? Card abandonment, I think you have the opportunity to not only cut it down, but actually increase the number of messages. So if you have three messages, right? Shrink that, consolidate it, but then add a fourth one on top of it. I've had clients do that in the past. They've had wild success with it. So the general answer is going to be yes, but just always think about the customer journey. But for the most part, people are going to be shopping. They're going to identify things. You want to be first at the punch on those. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Greg. And, and our second question for you is from Jennifer. Actually, I love this question. I think it's, it's a really interesting one. Um, it's easy to get overwhelmed with the copywriting aspect of marketing. Can you recommend any kind of resources where someone can go to get inspiration on 
how to write those SMS or email messages? Yeah, so I I would generally tell you not to overthink it, right? SMS will probably be one thing because it's more text heavy, right? You can use MMS, but it's still going to be a little more text heavy. But luckily, you're you're truncated down to 160 characters. Emails, I would you know I would just tell you be bold with your visuals, right? That's what people are going to be scanning so much quicker during the season as, as well. So don't feel you have to write a paragraph. Don't feel you have to write a story, right? Use the visuals to kind of convey that. So hopefully it's better. Um, SMS, probably a little more dicey here. So there's a few things you could do. Uh, do go to Pinterest and do a, a search there and you can find some pretty good stuff. Um, really good emails and really, I think it's really good text, which is their sister website has a bunch of SMS messages and resources where you can kind of browse around and see what other people are doing as well. Um, so those are two, the Pinterest is always a good one, but uh, check out really good emails and really good text as well. It could usually be a good resource. And then uh, the one thing that marketers will always go to is milled. So M I L L E D.com. That's kind of the email uh, aggregation site as well. So you could always check those out, but uh, that's probably where I would start. Fantastic. That's really great advice. Thank you, Greg. Then my answer would have been include puns wherever you can, but that's not the right answer. So I fantastic. love puns. <laughs> I think, it, you know, short, snappy messages, they can work. But, um, yeah. And it, quick, so shameless call out as well. This is also not gated, but we have an email subject line tester as well. So I know it's a little bit different than copywriting, but you can just plug an email in there and it kind of gives you a score of that stuff as well. So you could just Google you know, um, you said uh, email subject line tester. So maybe you get some creative ideas from there as well. No, oh, brilliant. Really interesting. Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, before we let you go, just to announce our OmniSend prize giving prize winner is Andrew Didrick Pitts. And you will be winning a, um, a taster kit from Toak Chocolate. So um, congratulations. We'll be in touch with that. Thank you very much, Greg. We'll um, let you go and move straight on to Krista over at ShipBob.